morning. We're looking to be joined by uh, Marvel Joseph Asien, who is uh, an organizational development consultant to review some of the demands for accountability as projected by most Nigerians. Now, and if we have established our connection with uh, Marvel Joseph Asien, let's say good morning and see if we can begin this conversation. Hello, good morning to you, sir, and welcome and thanks for joining us. I'm having difficulties hearing you, but I believe if the connection is all right from our Uyo studios, we can get your thoughts on the developments in line with Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary. Well, we still can't hear each other. There is some challenge with having the connectivity based on audio quite clear but the visuals are okay as uh, we look to join marvel joseph Etienne e. from our uyo studios but just like i highlighted some of the issues to be discussed are based on the approach of the current administration towards the yearning of nigerians many nigerians blame the current hardship on certain policies and rhetorics made by president bola metinibu dating back to his inaugural speech where he said subsidy was gone Subsequently, the promises to assuage the yearnings of Nigeria with the provision of alternative sources of mass transportation have only seen 64 CNG buses delivered to students and labor. We're told that another 2,000 tricycles would be disbursed, but this is far away from the 3,500 as promised and marked by the Presidential Gas Initiative. Now, amidst these challenges have been protests and demonstrations across cities in Nigeria in different phases. We're looking to review some of the demands made with the hashtag fearless in October protests now being characterized by some section of the media as having a political agenda. The likes of activist Shoere was seen in Lagos leading a procession. Does this align with the original hashtag end bad governance in Nigeria protest? How different is the hashtag fearless in October protest? And going into the last concluding months of 2024, are we expecting any respite? Mind you, President Bola Metinibu yesterday did intimate Nigerians on the need for a 30-day confab, where youth representatives will be given a platform to advise the government. Recommendations are expected. But with all this being the situation, some persons point their fingers to protesters who were remanded, incarcerated owing to their involvement and the use of tear gas in some sports. It's a broad discussion, and we're hoping to pick it a piece at a time to get the perspectives of most Nigerians, much like yourself and I, and also Marvel Joseph Isien, if our connection is now much better. Let's head back to our Uyo studios and see if we now have a more fluid connection. Hello, good morning to you once again, Mr. Isien. Can you hear me now? I can hear you very well now. Oh, beautiful. I can hear you too as well. A happy independence. Oh, beautiful. I can hear you. Now, let's get straight into the discussion. Let's get your thoughts on the mood around yesterday's celebration. Low keyed in some area, disgruntlement in others, the cutting of ceremonial cakes in some seats of power across states and even at Aso Villa. What did you make of yesterday's observance of our Independence Day? Yesterday just came like every, in the last, about 20 years or so, we've been celebrating independence in a very low-key manner. Uh, you see, the economic situation in the may have been responsible for this because, like I would always say, uh, we have so many reasons to celebrate our independence, uh, even though we may not have the means for now to celebrate the independence. Yesterday's own was a bit different because, um, like you may have also observed that uh, the, the protest in bad of protest is it fearless thing like that uh, uh, propped up in many cities in Nigeria yesterday. Abuja was part of it. Uh, we witnessed a very peaceful protest in Lagos. We also saw that there was a, a bit of a, a crisis in uh, Abuja. And allegedly, there were some arrests in Kano. Uh, that's not what it should be for 
is a, a, an Independence Day celebration. But all the protesters, some of the highlights they showed was uh, about uh, the cost of living, which of course was also addressed by Mr. President in his uh, speech earlier in the morning. That he acknowledged well, that, speech, of course, this is the situation that, that we on find ourselves. Speech, in my own, own opinion, I would think that we rather should continue with dialogue and have suggestions on ways we could make our economy better instead of embarking on protest. Protest is a legitimate right, protest is now. But given our circumstances in Nigeria, where we often miss for a time of rioting, or sometimes people with good intentions to aid their views go on the streets and found it being hijacked by miscrimes and it would result in government properties being damaged. Sometimes people lose their personal properties, business places may be touched on such a riot in a, such a riotous situation. That is not what it should be. Therefore, if people are to embark on a protest and they align with the security agencies and the security agencies on their part to uh, well coached on how to manage such situations, then of course there's nothing wrong in protest. But we, uh, in my own opinion, I think we should be more concerned about bringing our solution to what problem they bearing in mind that of course it we have been having challenges in Nigeria dating back to the time of our independence in 1960. We have also been having political challenges in Nigeria dating back to the time of our, even prior to our independence. If you remember uh, the motion as it was moved for independence in Nigeria by Antonio Inahoro in 1953 and moved again in 1956. And you remember that some protectorates in Nigeria, in fact, particularly the Northern Protectorate, protested that they don't want independence. But of course, uh, we still moved ahead and struggled to get independence in 1960. That was part of political challenges. Soon after that political challenges, we also had, six years after we had the civil war, and it was a very big one. Apart from the civil war, some people had thought that the June 12, 1993 crisis in Nigeria, that Nigeria will never remain as a country again. But of course, I think we learned our lessons in the crisis we had in 1967. I'm talking about the civil war. And based on those crises that we had, and from those cri that crisis, we began to lessons. If you also uh, cast your mind back, you remember how NC, NC and the Action Congress parties were doing their campaigns and how riotous it used to be, the challenges we used to have even during campaigns and election day and so on. Even up to the time of NPN, UPN, that stock 17 election was the kind of crisis we used to have, that we have recorded some improvement over time. Nigeria is evolving, Nigeria is improving. We we have had 25 years of uninterrupted democracy so far. It is worth celebrating Nigeria coming out from those woods. And we also know that the Nigeria, that uh, some government, the military government in Nigeria said, money is not our problem, but how to spend it is that that physical discipline that we lacked at that time has impacted us up till now. And for us to find our track back, it's, going, it's not going to be that smooth and easy. We also remember in this country when a civilian government were importing champagne and sometimes customizing those champagnes for, uh, for celebrations or for their consumption in Nigeria. That appetite for such imported consumption are dating back to 1960s, to 1990s, to 1980s. It's what is impacting us today. And like the president rightly postulated in his speech, that well, if we keep going on that track, that Nigeria would be doomed. Of course, I believe so, and that is so correct. And of course, now that we are embarking on reforms, we should support the government in embarking this, uh, through these reforms. But it actually needs talking about the government keep educating reforms. Can we revisit some of the comments made by President Bola Metinibu and some of the recommendations in the opposite? Notably, the president yesterday intimated Nigerians of his desire to confirm a 30-day confab to have youth groups represented to give recommendations to the government. Now, the MBF is asking what has happened 
to the 2014 National Confab and its recommendations. Do you think there is a need for President Bola Metinibu to revisit recommendations made under the then President Goodluck Jonathan in a way to somewhat have a background for this 30 day conference he is proposing? The, 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 the 30 day conference by the president is highly commendable. Uh, of course, we may want to say President Jonathan organized a national conference and that conference was not implemented. But like I would always say, there is nothing about wrong about continuing in dialogue. It's all fair and good for us to continue discussing these things, for us to continue uh, having people ha place out their ideas, air out their views regarding how we should run this country as the 30 days conference proposed by the president is being contemplated. Of course, uh, the youth have the right or a role to play in contributing to the growth of Nigeria and making their own submission to the what Nigeria is going to, uh, what, what way Nigeria should be. And it is highly uh, commendable that the president is backing on that initiative. Part of a platform that should be seen by example, those protesting yesterday to know that there is a platform in place that they can come out and make their contribution and aid their views. Sometimes when people talk about this protest, I heard some protesters saying yesterday that the price of fuel should come down. If we have a true knowledge of what it is and how the Naira has been devalued and the impact of uh, how it has impacted on fuel price. We have a good knowledge of the economic metrics surrounding this decision of uh, fuel subsidy and all that. I think we would also uh, be putting others and people in a better state to understand how to contribute to this discussion, to this conversation, whether it's based on fuel subsidy or whether it is based on food prices, as we have seen how inflation, food inflation has really skyrocketed as the days, we can also link it to insecurity. We can also link of transportation. If we have all this understanding, then we'll be bringing up ideas on how to uh, put away insecurity, on how to and how to make this naira very strong in order for us to be able to reduce the fuel price and how to make our refineries work. We should be making contributions in, in that to government that we think you should do. With this thing, you should support the modular refineries in this way. We think we should support the private refineries in this way and that way. Those contributions, that conversation would help government better because it's not just about government, it's about Nigeria. Government is about the people and it is the people that have put the government there. And if we are not satisfied with the way government are going about things, we support them with ideas, we support them with intellectual discussions, we engage the government intellectually in order to find solution to where we are finding ourselves. We should also be making contributions in terms of our reforms and what we should do about our electoral reforms in a manner that it would stabilize the country. Recently, the government have heard the Federal Executive Committee talking about the Economic Stabilization Bill. And if you read, you see that it is a very uh, bill fixed with high hopes. But the implementation, how is it going to be done, especially the aspect where states are supposed to support the federal government by not collecting certain level of taxes and so on. If the, it is implementable, if it is practical that it would be done, then of course we know small businesses will find relief in this, uh, in, through this uh, uh, economic stabilization bill and will make the country more productive. And as the country is moving, towards production, then we would also know that we are strengthening the Naira, and if the purchasing power of individuals are well strengthened, then of course we know that uh, the economy would gradually get better. We should we also, also lose yet. sight of the achievements of government in terms of what they have done at level that is yet to trickle down to the micro level. We should also uh, uh, support them in that way. I also commend the CB talked about the fundamentals. My understanding of the fundamentals he discussed was about uh, propping up, making sure that we are able to increase our production. 
and not just relying on oil and oil revenue. And now, of Mr. course, Etienne, he some also. Of the challenges with these social economic indicators you've talked about brings to mind the conversation based on political independence and economic independence. There are a lot of assertions that some of the challenges Nigeria is facing today is as a result of depending on Bretton Woods institutions, the likes of the World Bank, IMF, to give us recommendations on how to grow our economy, other than relying on homegrown solutions. Many Nigerians continue to ask why we are over-dependent on oil and why can't we, much like when agriculture was the mainstay of our economy, have more investments in the agric value chain. Do you think that Nigeria, in some sense, hasn't made efforts in 64 years towards achieving some level of economic independence? The sovereign, sovereign country. country. When we keep emphasizing on the role of IMF and other foreign agencies regarding the growth of Nigeria, it doesn't really go down well with in my because we are a sovereign country. We know that we have come from a history of uh, you know economic situation where we will always be asking what do we do and what do we not do to strengthen our economy. But we also remember that before oil, that we were very strong in the agricultural system, agricultural uh, economy was very strong before oil came. It was when oil came and we lost focus. We lost focus on where we should put our focus. That is when we lost track of what we should, the attention that we should have paid to uh, production in terms of the economic aspect of it. So we, we have also seen us coming through austerity measures, structural adjustment, and all sort of programs as people will think. And of course, we may know that some of those were international uh, bank, international IMF, international monetary fund issues, or the World Bank issues, that they just make suggestions to the country. But the sovereignty of the country remains. And we think that we should also be thinking indigenously on how to impact on our e economy. And if these suggestions uh, from the uh, World Bank or IMF are not correct or are not serving us right, then we have a right to sit as a sovereign country to decide on the path to go. It, it, it is not the World Bank that would uh, the, uh, make us have appetite for foreign goods, for example, to be importing spoon plates, toothpicks, and so on. We also can, uh, can see a way to go to see how we can uh, strengthen our economy. There are many governments that have come and spoken about us strengthening internal production. Uh, we have taken policies uh, state about banning imports, about uh, placing high excise duties and all that to see how we can manage our economy. Until the recent times where CBN has had to devalue the Naira so much, which I think has encouraged export to a large extent that we are having a trade surplus today. We are evolving, but on the whole, we cannot that uh, we have not achieved so much politically and economically. We have achieved uh, to some extent that we are able to say that we are uh, to, to follow. So if we're looking at the economic side, of course, we are making progress. Uh, that progress at this time that we are having economic reforms in our country requires us to, be, to look inwards more, to be more indigenous in our, uh, see how we can be more patriotic to see if we can drive the country to where we should. And politically, too, we came from a background where we are doing uh, manual voting. We are moving towards electronic voting. We have not achieved that yet, but of course, we have taken a ser series of steps to see how we can achieve uh, electronic voting, which would be far more reliable than any other uh, voting standard. So political uh, let's also talk, talk about the political independence perspectives in terms of our system of governance. We have seen in Nigeria pre-colonialism, post-colonialism that has attempted to adopt the parliamentary system in some states and also metamorphosed into the presidential system. Now, at this particular time, some members of the National Assembly are also proposing a rotational presidency, the creation of more states, the creation of more region. And many are asking, is this in some bid to find 
a homegrown solution to agitations, marginalization, and the principle of federal character which we envision in electing those chosen leaders to govern us. My question now is, how would you assess Nigeria's growth through political independence or into the systems of governments we have adopted from the Britain on one hand, the Americans on the other, and with this proposal by some members of the National Assembly on the table of our federal legislators? In the situation that we find ourselves, every when we talk about leadership, the situational leadership is always the best. And at the situation, at the circumstances we are finding ourselves today in Nigeria, we need to circumspect thinking and uh, suggesting solutions to our problems. Of course, Nigeria has come through a, a bit of ways. We've operated the parliamentary system, like you have said. We've also uh, operated the presidential system. But of course, some people may argue that we just hijacked a presidential system without really uh, uh, looking domestic the presidential system to suit us. Uh, the question on zoning, uh, this particular period of our uh, uh, politics is uh, Okay, for us to zone to the zones for now, but I think we should be moving more to uh, adopt a system where we find a better uh, c candidates that really fit to run an election. That is talking about uh, emphasis on merit. But you see, our system, when you talk, talk about the federal character system, when you talk about the kind of things that we have in the constitution that is promoting uh, zoning one way or the other, is also reducing uh, the emphasis that we should place on merit. As we are discussing this, if we also introduce independent candidacy, it, it would, to a large extent, neutralize the things that we are having, which may be playing down on merit, on the values of merit that is affecting our nation, even through federal government appointments, uh, state government's appointments, and why this zoning standing against the values of merit that we are supposed to promote. But on the whole, when you look at it and say, what is our circumstance at the present day? What is our situation at the present day? Then we would also say, well, as we are evolving towards uh, uh, this is that we may find that we need all these uh, things in between to be able to uh, sell through, to be able to move through the circumstances smoothly without necessarily uh, rocking the boat. So whether we adopt a zonal system, whether it's a presidential system, the idea of us having a national assembly that can always sit back to discuss and make suggestions on the way to go is a, a plus to our democracy. And that is why I said earlier on that uh, we should also look at the fact that our democracy is evolving and having spent Oh, I would say only 25 years when you comparatively think of uh, nations that have had over 100 years democracy, 200 years democracy, that of course, before we clock 50 years democracy, that we would have achieved so much. Even in the next five years or 10 years, I believe that uh, democracy would be stronger. And that is why we have an assembly that would keep uh, giving ideas and discussing and dialoguing and having conversations for us to be able to uh, democracy and politics in the way of giving us a, a, a head where, where we also really desire to be. Now, and also, let's look at another step taken by the current administration of the day to strengthen the issues of local government autonomy. Now, the third year of government, many would say, has been neglected despite having abundant resources over time. Now, whilst the government has been able to obtain a Supreme Court judgment in that regard, many consider the, the role state governors have to play in allowing for a meritorious emergence of elected local government chairmen and their council. What do you make of this step? Is it one in the right direction? On the other hand, would the state governors allow for the third year to thrive? And that's a big one because that's another phase of our 
political development that we are uh, about to witness. Uh, the Supreme Court has done well to grant the autonomy to the uh, local government, but you see, when you look at the control state governors had in the past been having over this local government, we should also be patient to know that even though that's a very good step in the right direction for, uh, for the uh, development to go down to the grassroots, if we, the local government, through this financial autonomy, becomes very strengthened to be able to make decisions in their own way, they will be able to carry out their needs assessment they are closer to the communities. They, are, they will be able to know what they really need. They will be able to know what roads, economic roads to pay attention to, to boost the economy of their area, of their uh, local areas. Then it is going to be a very good one. But you see, uh, as we are going to trans, uh, if, if it is going to be very smooth for us to transit to this, the governors will have challenges at the beginning, in my own opinion, on, since they have always been having very strong controls over the finances of this local and the uh, political control over this local government. But we have to start somewhere. As we are starting, we would not, we would not think that the state governors will just lose their grips in the local government completely. The, the, it is going to be a gradual process. But all what I am saying, in my opinion, that it is all well and good for this process to have been. God. I commend the Supreme Court government, the federal government, for pushing through to have this local government autonomy, given the benefits, derivable, given the benefits that this is going to have in the general development of the nation. Because we, when once this is this starts, we are going to see people paying more attention to the government at that level. And when people begin to pay attention to the government at that level, we begin to have more competent people, people with capacity, vying to become local government chairman. And when once that happens, then we know that it would, on the long run, turn to even assist the state government in their development uh, strides. Because now, state government. Uh, it, 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 it's not easy for you to oversee a, maybe you have 30 something local or 20 something local government in your state. How to relate with this 31 it wouldn't be as easy as if these people are also strengthened to be able to take care of their basic needs, to be able to submit their needs assessment, to do their research, and for people to also have a right to choose who they want to become their own local government chairman. We'll be able to truly assess this local government chairman now, their performance, and so on. And this is something that will bring more development to the people because the, when once you give power to those at the grassroots, then the issue of uh, development will come closer to the people and that's a very easy way to get rid of in all aspects of our economy eventually when these local governments are truly strengthened through this fiscal autonomy. Now, in moving to other issues as we continue to record the milestones and achievements of Nigeria, you mentioned some of the teething challenges with oppositions back when it was proposed that we gain independence prior to 1953 and then post-1956. Many continue to look at certain regions of the country as not having some of the natural resources which are benefiting others. Take, for instance, the Niger Delta. Despite our natural resources being domiciled there, the level of development has not been quite visible as compared to other regions of the country that are without such a commonwealth. Now, we've seen agitations in the southeast as well. Do you think that we can actively say that our unity and diversity has better strengthened the nation other than have regions take care of themselves from the allocations and the resources in their regions? Uh, I, I guess your question, I didn't get the question well. But are you talking about uh, allocations to Niger Delta? Uh, or we are talking about the natural resources that we had in Niger Delta prior to oil? Yeah, that's exactly the timeline before oil exploration began. And after oil exploration, the allocations and even the resources, the people continue to agitate that they are not being taken care of 
as well as other regions without such resources. I, I, I don't know. If we are talking about the resources in um, Niger Delta and how it has affected the people of Niger Delta, I, I would put it this way. I, I, I didn't get the question, but, but I guess that's the direction we should be talking about. Now, before all of us, we had our fishing uh, settlements and we had a, a lot of uh, blue economy activities going on before the exploration oil, especially in our part of the country, that's Aquaiwom State and its environs. And we also had activities uh, relating to other economic areas that oil production has affected, especially when you consider the effect of oil spills that we often have uh, in these uh, areas, then we, we know that the economy has been affected in some way or the other. So now when we talk about uh, uh, what, how much resources we are getting in our part of the country, then we know that these resources would have been to augment our economic uh, standing, having lost uh, basically the ways that we used to generate revenue through our blue e e economy. Now, if we have lost that, then we should be also thinking about developing uh, other economic means of livelihood in our area to subsidize whatever we have lost in the blue economy area. Now, to what extent this has been? Of course, we have struggled today to have 18% derivation revenue to these uh, areas, but is that sufficient? I would say no. It is not so that we would have need. We need more in terms of what would help us to be able to uh, reconstruct, given the kind of um, impact, environmental impact, this oil exploration has caused us. That we would have needed more in terms of. You would know what it means if you are living close to this area, as you see, if you have a zinc over your house that would have lasted for 20 years, you will just find that zinc lasting for two, three years. It's gone because of the environmental uh, in this, uh, oil activities, oil exploration has caused areas like this. So these are areas that we should also be thinking of. But prior to independence, prior to the oil issues, we know how strong we were the e economically. We know we can remember the, uh, even the granite pyramids in the north and all that uh, being thrown away, cocoa in the west and all that being not being utilized where I know how strong the oil revenue from this agricultural aspects were before now that we were able to have the big cocoa house in Lagos and in your state, Ibadan, and so on, that they, are, they were using and utilizing it to improve their economy, to work within their own space of uh, economic activities. But all those are gone, and we all, all came out to depend on oil. Uh, after independence, uh, after the Civil War, we started depending on oil, and now we are trying to find ourselves back to the root. We are trying to find ourselves back to the economic activities that we should really focus on, that is agriculture. Uh, to a very large extent, I heard the president yesterday commending some states in Nigeria that have thought of mechanized farming, which is the, actually the way to go for us to come out from the woods that we have found ourselves today. If we look at it in, on the whole, we know that uh, uh, all the revenue formula whatever is uh, as is standing now needs to be revisited. We also know that our activities, our production activities needs to be revisited for us to be able to say that we are going on a true economic recovery for Nigeria, which we know that agriculture will impact so much on the growth of Nigeria. Now, I also heard the, gov the president talking about uh, the assembly plan for tractors, which is a, good, a, a very good one. So if we are able to build more of these uh, agricultural tools for production, then we put it round all out in the country for farmers to use. And we are able to take care of the insecurity that we have had in the country, especially in the northern part of the country over the years. Then we know that uh, this would also help our uh, agricultural uh, activities and when once we grow and we strengthen our agricultural sense in that way, then we are certain that our naira would become strengthened. And when once our 
and Naira becomes stronger, our purchasing power would improve. So when we look at uh, it from whatever aspect we are, we are looking at it in terms of stabilizing our economy, in terms of improving on our economy, which would also, as a resultant effect, impact on our political drives in this state. Because the most important thing in a country is for us to have peace in a country where there is peace, there is room for improvement. Where there is peace, there is room for conversations, intellectual conversations that would lead us out of a crisis, that will let us see how we can develop ourselves, that could also help us to push through the technological drives that will help our country, Nigeria, to see how we can be more productive in this uh, digital era that we have found ourselves. We need peace for us to be able to be more functional in everything that we do to, to promote our uh, economic and political uh, activities. So uh, your, your question, in my own understanding, touches on our socio-political or uh, political e economic situation in our country, which, uh, to a large extent, we are struggling with today, and which, of course, I believe that we are on the right path, focusing more on how to improve our economy, and especially uh, stabilizing the Naira, especially also seeing how to strengthen the Naira to make sure that we are able to improve on our purchasing power uh, to impact on this uh, situation that we have found ourselves. But when once this is achieved, then we know that the inflation, especially the food inflation, when once the food inflation begins to drop or drops to a large extent, then the average inflation which we have today at 32% will be coming down. And when once this inflation comes down, to a, a large extent, then the cost of living that we keep talking about, all this will comes down, boils down to the cost of living that we are experiencing today that is very high in Nigeria today, it would also come down. And when once the cost of living comes down, then the people, so many agitations that we are having today will begin to reduce. People are seeing things from, from the aspects of uh, lack that we are experiencing today. But if we are able to strengthen our economy, then most of these complaints will reduce to a very large extent. But the other part to it is for the citizens to also understand that we need to make these sacrifices for our tomorrow. If we don't make these sacrifices today, then we are certain to have a very bleak tomorrow. On the other hand, we also speak about those that are engaged in corruption to a very large extent. It is allegedly believed that NNPCL is not a very uh, 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 organization. And if we can reform NNPC in Nigeria, that would go ahead to strengthen every other aspect. It would also make people have more confidence in the government. If every action that organizations, institutions of government carry out are done transparently, then we are certain to have people having more confidence of government. For instance, yesterday, people they protest, they talk about bad governance. It's all about the economy. It's cost of living. But if we are able to have people uh, check their corruption level, also we have people in government reducing governance, not making decisions that will make people feel that, ah, you are enjoying life when we are suffering, when we are, that are not in government are suffering. You are spending so much on things that the citizens may consider irrelevant. How we, we, you, what amount are you placing on buying vehicles for government officials? What amount are you placing on building residential official houses for uh, uh, all those things impact on the citizens' confidence in a government? So the government will do itself well if it sits back to look at the situation on ground and begin to do things that will help the people know that they are actually empathetic towards this situation that we are finding ourselves here. So while the people uh, should be encouraged to sacrifice for government, government should be seen as making some kind of sacrifices that will make us feel the oneness, the sense of belonging, the inclusivity should be very, very clear. We should do make actions that will make us feel that a certain aspect of governance is all we are finding nepotism in government to a large extent or favoritism in government to a large extent. We should make actions or take decisions that will make people know that government is taking actions 
based on merit, not just making actions based on sentiments of where people come from or where uh, you, the I'd kind like to of agree group with you that you there, Mr. Sien, but let's also talk about another sensitive issue affecting Nigeria. Since 1960 up until there about 2012, uh, 2021, 2022, the amounts budgeted for the military and defense have recorded over 1,900% increments. Yet, Nigeria post-independence continues to grapple with issues like kidnapping, insurgency, insecurity, banditry, and other manifestations of violence that have hindered the peace with much Sikh in Nigeria. Do you think that uh, we have been very sincere in our fight against terrorism post-independence? Or into the challenges we continue to recount year after year. Uh, you, you see, when we also may be talking about the increase in spendings of government, we should also be looking at the value of the Naira itself. So if you were buying a, a certain uh, arms or technology, with a, maybe a hundred thousand dollars, for example, and you're spending hundred thousand naira to make that purchase. That is, if we think about it as one to one, then when naira has been so devalued that uh, you would need uh, ten million naira to buy something of a hundred thousand dollars, for example, then we may not really be saying that uh, the budget has increased uh, over the years. We would also be. To compare mango to mango, apple to apple, to say that, that uh, this is the of what the budget of Nigeria is in terms of the. We are in a global village, so we cannot just uh, look at our uh, currency to use in judging the values or the value of whatever product we have. But having said that, I would also say that. Uh, Activities of government since then, when it talks of uh, investments that government has made on security, uh, as much as I believe, and I, I think, I may think that uh, most of those monies are not spent, uh, on, that they should be, maybe the money may be uh, uh, taken to other areas. I would also say that uh, we have also uh, we, we cannot really say we have not really recorded improvement in our security in the nation because uh, we know how it were after the civil war what on the reconstructing Nigeria. What we have spent in Nigeria, building the roads, building uh, the buildings that were destroyed during the civil war, moving from there and what we have spent in the uh, generally constructing the country. Then the capacity of our military, what we have done in, in that direction, it, it, it cannot be said to be zero. But on the other hand, could we have done better? Yes, we could have done better. Also, would take us to maybe assessing government over the years from 1960 till now and their uh, area areas of focus, areas of priorities, what priorities they have set. There are governments that may have come and gone without really putting security. Otherwise, we wouldn't be discussing the kind of things that we discussed today about the uh, kind of tools our security men are using to carry out their activities. We see what guns the police are using uh, for their, to maintain peace in the country, even the uniforms that they wear, even their welfare standard and all that. We see the military too, the efforts that military has uh, uh, spent how Nigeria went to maintain peace in uh, the sub-region, that is the West African sub-region through ECOMOP. Now, we also see how much has been spent in this direction. So we may be talking about the different priorities that governments have set over the years. So when we are looking at these uh, security issues, we also will look at it in terms of a government coming to set a priority of actually using technology to see how they can balance things when it comes to security issues. Today, we still have police in Nigeria conducting stop and search on the road. We still have setting up uh, checkpoints on the road, mounting checkpoints on the road. 
Those are supposed to be very archaic ways of uh, driving security uh, in Nigeria, but that is what we are witnessing today. We also would have known that uh, if we were to employ more technology in that direction, that maybe the number of manpower we actually require would not be as high as we are getting today. And we, it, that's another argument completely to say how many uh, policemen should uh, mount checks on uh, how many, what population in a country or in a state. We also may be discussing if federal government uh, right to keep certain things in their exclusive uh, list. Or what are we having in the recurrent list when we talk about uh, the, uh, the budget things in our constitution as it, it would help us? But uh, we also should know that the police, if we were to uh, make uh, strengthen our grassroots, then we should also be discussing the state police, which I think may be more effective than when you post people from other parts of the country to police an area in the state. And we are still dwelling in the dawn of uh, giving powers to the uh, federal government uh, in police matters. Whether uh, state governors should have control in their state, who the Commission of Police in the state is reporting to, those are issues that we should engage more in conversations to really know if we are on the right path of improving our security. What areas of security should we really focus on? Are there better ways of doing it? Yes, there are better ways of doing it. And that uh, would be done if we use technology to assist us more in doing these things. And if we are also paying attention to the welfare of our security men, so that it may reduce the level of uh, a seeming we have in that industry. Sometimes you drive on the road and a policeman stops you on the road and begins to ask very embarrassing questions that you wouldn't expect a security man to ask. For example, if you have a police in unit and you have them in a kidnapping unit or an anti-robbery unit, and you see them engaging in civil squabbles, maybe a landlord calling them to settle a matter with a tenant and so on. Those are embarrassing situations that we shouldn't be finding. It takes us to be thinking about how to improve on our institutions. It's not just security institutions, if no matter how strengthened other institutions are, if the judiciary as an institution is not also reformed significantly, then it would not also help the country. Every other in, in Nigeria should be strengthened for us to have the kind of security that we should have in the country. No matter how much money you put into security, if you... We must thank you, Mr. Marvel Joseph Essien, for this strong points you have raised in reminding us of the need to strengthen our institutions and in the observance of our 64th independence anniversary. But this is as much time would permit for us to engage in this conversation. We do wish you the best of the rest of today.